Hopefully there's no kinks, but uh, it looks like we're recording and we're live. Uh, one second, let me do one thing. Make one sure your signal's good. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I put no disturb sign. All right. Listen, everybody can see you, so we have a special guest today. Can I say where you are? I'm moving around. I'm moving around. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm on the move. But you're on the so, ground. Uh, you're in Ukraine. So you're I, on the ground. So, uh, well, no, no. I, I mean... Possibly. Uh, possibly, possibly. But, you know, I can't confirm nor deny that. And, That's uh, the answer I'm looking I, for. <laughs> I, I, I apologize that I don't look like a U.S. Navy captain. I look like a Army captain. But, but we, um but because we're, I haven't shaved, you know, and I, I, I don't have clothes, in, you know, that I'm being moving because on the uh, morning of 24th of uh, February, I was in a, in a building where I stay. That was a huge blast in Kiev. It shook the w walls and windows and it was a big flash. So we got out of the building and I, didn't, I thought we were going to go back. But then everybody, but when we heard bombardment of Kiev, which I thought was bizarre, I mean, it's 21st century European city just bombarding it like that. And uh, we said, okay, well, let's drive outside of the city. And mm. when we start to drive outside of the city, then, uh, you know, everything got to go. It's a full scale war um, of uh, last century type of a war with guns, airplanes, you know, in a, in a, in a city. And um, then I, I had I was getting informed that uh, I'm kind of the enemy because mm. uh, I'm a very outspoken anti-Putin and pro-Trump, which makes me a double enemy. And because I'm uh, I was a NATO officer representing NATO in Russia, it makes me triple enemy. Mm. And because I was a Jewish refugee from Soviet Union, it makes me quadruple enemy. So pretty much, I'm a bad guy that the Russians don't like. And uh, uh, so we do, we kept on driving and driving, so we're driving around. Take take everybody and, through. And, uh, I was going to say, Gary, take, if you can, Captain, take everybody through what what got us here, and in, in the short run, you know, I mean, and let's not go back a hundred years, but let's let's understand kind of how we got to this place and what you're seeing and what you're hearing. I think we got to that place because we had a series uh, of weak leadership, mm. uh, one after another, and uh, there was a little break for four years, and uh, that break, you know, Putin sat that out, said he was his man, so uh, everybody wanted to get rid of Trump, and they said that at any cost, get rid of Trump at any cost, well, we're, here's the price. Mm. The price is that we have Ukrainians are fighting like hell. And bleeding, not just for Ukraine, but for all of us. And Putin already has captured Chernobyl. Remember that place, uh -huh. Chernobyl? Of course. There are four reactors there that need to be serviced. One is, you know, in a dome. So nobody's servicing them. So there's a disaster, nuclear disaster waiting to happen there. And he knows it. And now he's saying he's good. You know, he brought his forces to nuclear mm -hmm. uh, readiness. Uh, to, because you're not because of Ukraine, but because of the United States. Now, um, I I was one of the people that kept saying that he wasn't going to do that. He was not going to attack, you know, full scale. Why? What's the purpose? You know, what is it for? And, uh, you know, Ukrainian army is not in 2014. They've been preparing for this war for eight years. They're right. armed. They're, but... Uh, I'm not a psychiatrist, but my mom was a psychiatrist for many years, and she kept saying he is a psychopath, that KGB thug is a psychopath and paranoid, like Hitler, like Stalin, like all the dictators who have been there for a long time, who sure. have that much power for a long time, they, they become sick and paranoid. So he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He can, he can push that button. So now he's blackmailing the whole world, and he's bombarding a, a peaceful country that was no threat to him whatsoever, claiming that NATO is the threat. So he's threatening the United States with a nuclear attack. And I don't think it should be taken lightly. And now, what are, no, we let him get away with everything, John. Mm. We let him, we let him get away with, uh, with uh, Chechen genocide when he was killing Chechen people. 
calling them terrorists and everybody said well yeah they're not very nice you know it's like jews in germany not not very good so let him do that then we let him get away with georgia and abhazia and Ossetia when he annexed that and started a war against georgia crimea and then and well now after georgia our secretary of state hillary clinton came back with a red reset button yeah so he says okay i got away with that mm -hmm. Well, we'll continue, you know, no skin off of my nose, then Crimea, then Pridnestrovia, then the Malaysian airline shut down, nothing, nothing. You know, right. here's sanctions, some little sanctions here, some little sanctions there. Those sanctions were working for him. So now he said, all right, I'm going to invade Ukraine. And what do we do? We clear our embassies out of the city, out of Kiev. He says, oh, okay, well, thank you very much. Now, there are no Western embassies. The only embassy that remained was a <laughs> Russian embassy. Right. Uh, and after Afghanistan, he sees, you know, what happened in Afghanistan and what happened in Belarus and Kazakhstan and the way NATO is reacting. He's saying, okay, all I have to do is smack them a little bit and they're all going to, you know, and they're going to surrender, the right. Ukrainians. They're left alone. Nobody wants to help them. All the embassies left. Mm. So here you go. So he starts a full scale attack. This guy is sick. He's a psychopath. He starts a full scale attack, but the Ukrainian people have been preparing and they're resisting. They're resisting like hell. Definitely, it's not a match. Now, but they're burning Russian tanks. They're, I tell you, the homeless people here collect bottles on the streets and make Molotov cocktails. Young kids love burning it. Russian tanks. A lot of Russian soldiers now. The thing is, we as Americans should appreciate, or we can appreciate that, because Russians, they're slaves. They're fighting for Putin. They're fighting, they don't know why. So a lot of Russian soldiers, conscripts, they're saying, we don't understand even where we are. Nobody told us. We're just told to go and fire on these people and drive through towns, and town people come out, and they stop with bare hands. They stop Russian columns of Russian tanks and saying, where are you going? Russian soldiers, they have no idea. They don't want to fight for Putin. They, they, mm. What's the purpose? What's the gain? But the Ukrainian people fight for their land. They fight for their country. They fight for that rich land, beautiful land, hardworking people. They fight for their families. So they're winning. They started to win. They pushed the Russians back that Russians didn't expect. They, uh, they're ending up in the booby traps. They're ending up in, uh, in all kinds of... Uh, ambushes by, that set up and the Ukrainian army is burning them, shutting down their airplanes. They need more weapons. They need more weapons. They have plenty of volunteers. They had civilian volunteers lining up at the what's called Homeland Defense. They handed them guns out, but only 30 rounds to mm. uh, AK. You know, it's they don't have weapons. They don't have ammunition. They don't have enough stingers. They don't have enough juvelines. They need thermal vision glasses because they're blind at night. They need everything. Did the, and, uh, did the Russians uh, fail the, logistically? Yeah. I was going to ask you, did the yeah. Russians fail logistically to understand how much the Ukrainians would fight? Uh, uh, what was unaccounted for in their initial push? Uh, well, I think they did. I think they miscalculated. Again, I think... What they thought is because the Western world abandoned Russia, like Israel, we have done, so, that they're going to give up. They, they, they have no fighting spirit. They realized Americans left, Germans left, Italians left, everybody left. I mean, uh, and uh, the, the, the Ukrainian spirit is going to be broken. Also, uh, they thought that the president of Ukraine, uh, President Zelensky, is a comedian. He's a, he's a star. He's, he's not a real president. He's a clown. You know, remember? Mm -hmm. Calling the president a clown. He's a clown. Well, this clown ended up being a steadfast, tough guy. He's on TV every day, speaking firmly, showing leadership, showing the stamina and endeavor mm -hmm. that he has to beat the Russians. He's not leaving the capital. That's why tonight... They're preparing a huge offensive on the capital. They realize they can't do anything on the periphery. People, they're getting killed. Uh, their, their supply lines, uh, their rear is too stretched. Tanks are without fuel. And the Ukrainians realize they don't really need to burn the tanks down. They need to burn the fuel uh, 
uh, fuel trucks. And then the tanks stop and they become a target. So, or armor personnel, any kind of armor vehicles. <clears throat> so the president turned out to be a true leader. People are rallying around him. He turned out to be a strong guy. And uh, he's not willing to negotiate with the Russians because Russians just, you know, they're giving him them ultima ultimatums and blackmailing him, you know, the KGB thugs. So we will see what happens. But now we have Chernobyl as a p potential disaster and we have a real nuclear threat. Now, the confusion also came is because Biden kept saying, I know he's going to attack. I know he's going to attack, but he didn't do anything about it. Mm. And then he says 11th of February, 16th of February, 20th of February, 23rd of February. But why? And if he's just going to have an in, uh, insignificant insurgent or significant insurgent, then we do this, then we'll bring those uh, 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 sanctions and these sanctions. But why are you waiting for him to, if you know for sure that he's going to do it, then why don't you preemptively bring sanctions and say, listen, I'm going to cut your, cut your uh, uh, central bank off because Swift, their, yep. uh, their, uh, their uh, monetary fund, their um, monetary reserve is in dollars. So all we have to do is just freeze their funds, like we did with Iran. Of course, Obama later on gave it back to them in cash, but and uh, and and stop their economy from working. Yeah. Also, bring you know bring the oil prices to where they. Were. All we have to do is start pumping oil and gas, like we did under the previous administration, I, and cut the lifeline from Putin. I I think instead they are new. So Ukrainians realized that Biden promised them. That he was going to be tough on on Putin. Biden promised them that he was going to that he the Putin is not going to be uh, in power for too long once he becomes a president. And then they realize that he lifts the sanctions of the Northern Stream, mm -hmm. applies the sanctions on our Keystone pipeline, oil prices go up. Right. Does not allow Americans to pump oil oil and gas on the federal uh, grounds for some green effects you know uh, but when the russians are doing that i guess it's okay and the chinese mm -hmm. are doing it. yeah a lot of people don't realize that the the environment created by the biden administration made it perfect for this to happen and the Absolutely. timing yeah and the timing was right before we get to the arming of the citizenry uh gary which i want to get to uh i want to touch on the 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 the, I guess, you know, people think is a toothless victory at Chernobyl. Chernobyl gives him logistically a huge advantage to maybe oh, potentially hide absolutely. the use of nuclear weapons under the guise of some type of meltdown or maybe potentially trying to hide it in media. Oh, I didn't do that. These guys are known for this. As you said, that KGB thugs that can come in and that can that can cause a whole bunch of problems using Chernobyl as a, as a, uh, as a position. Uh, how do you see that playing out and do you potentially see any merit in what I'm saying or him potentially Potentially using well, that. I think uh, absolutely. You're ops hundred percent right. People don't realize that they saying, "Oh, okay." So he got a this uh, defunct uh, military full of radiation. Guy. Yeah, a place. Let him handle it. Yeah, he's going. He, okay, you got to realize the guy's a psychopath. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about the money. He doesn't care about his kids. He doesn't care about anything. He's going to die soon anyway. Mm -hmm. the, as they say, he wants. He wants. Uh, he's paranoid. He wants to eliminate his enemies. Ukraine is an enemy number one. He was able to submit Belarus. He was able to submit Kazakhstan. He was able to submit Georgia, even Georgia. And the president of former president of Georgia, Saakashvili, is in prison. This personally, the only one that was a large, uh, bleeding, pulsating hemorrhoid that he had that was itching him every day is was Ukraine. They were not submit. They were want, They wanted to be independent. They wanted to be part of the Western world. Mm -hmm. We betrayed them. President Biden is responsible for it. He wanted to get rid of Trump at any cost. This is the cost. We're at nuclear level up. And let me tell you something. Putin is no Khrushchev. And the Biden is not President Kennedy. We're in a different game. We, we have different leaders. Khrushchev survived the war. He lost kids in the war. Mm -hmm. He was doing everything to avoid the war. So was Brezhnev. Mm -hmm. This thug is, is willing to waste somebody else's life 
uh, <laughs> like a meat fodder. I, That's I, what it is. I think it's it's so indicative of how dangerous he is that they're literally arming the citizenry. They're literally going to police stations, arming the citizens with whatever they can. Like you said, maybe it's 30-round magazines, which is totally counterintuitive to what we do here in the United States with, with gun restrictions. You know, People don't realize when you're at war seeing some of these clips come back. I think, to an extent, Gary, hopefully it's a huge wake-up call to everybody here of what this actually looks like. I've had countless people message me i'm sure you have that are like oh my god i can't believe a tank ran over this person driving down the road listen this is what it is and you're seeing nothing compared to what cartels will do to you and your family nothing compared to what these people will do when they kick in your door and they want to rape you kidnap you murder you kill your family in front of you i mean this is nothing what we're seeing now of what these people are capable of john dude i mean people uh people are weird we learn nothing from our history i'm jewish and i'm looking now at my american jewish pop and i think what the hell is wrong with you haven't you learned anything and i told you in the previous show when i was in auschwitz how they were told how they were Oh, hello, hello yeah i'm still here we still got you on audio uh hopefully up yep, videos back there yeah we go. yeah I don't know why he is somebody's calling. So anyway, uh, you know, we learn nothing from history. And it's, again, we let him get away with everything, just like we let uh, uh, let uh, Hitler get away. Okay, a little bit of Czechoslovakia, you know, let Stalin and Hitler. Uh, there's a little bit of, uh, little, you know, let them split Poland up. I mean, everything is fine. It's going to be okay. So, uh, so... Uh, you know, this, uh, we, the, the same thing, you know, Chamberlain coming in, I brought you peace, you know, the same thing. Let's talk to Putin. Let's come to, let's bring a red button for a reset button. We bring you peace. You know, doesn't work with those maniacs. Does not work. You got to get rid of them. If we don't get rid of them right now, I mean, we don't have much time to play with. I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to create a nuclear disaster. If, if I wouldn't if, be surprised. If Putin had just walked in and the Ukrainians welcomed it, I think on the world stage, people would have been like, okay, that's what they want, right? You know, that would have been the initial reaction. But we're seeing not only major pushback, but people are, are prepared to die to defend, and they have. Uh, we saw that on the... On the um, on the takeover of the island with the initial troops saying, you know, fuck you to the, to the, to the carry, to the Russian ships that came in. Uh, you know, I think we're going to see more and more of that. It, it, we're seeing, well, it we see, see, there's, there's plenty of it. And I, I tell you what I also see, I see men getting their wives and kids in the car, drive to the border, unload them, turn around and, and go, go back. back. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Now, what are you hearing from the Ukraine? Are they hunkered down and prepared to go to the, to, to, to the end? And how does this change the world's opinion of Putin? Because I know at times people you know that don't understand this, Gary, they get this love affair with China and with Chinese money and with Russian and Russian money. And they, they think that these people won't kick in their door and, and rape and kidnap them. It's crazy. Uh, hopefully on the world stage, they start to acknowledge this. Uh, the Ukrainians always understood that. Uh, what do you want the, the United States and the citizens here to take away from this, especially the arming of the citizenry at the ground level to say, hey, you got to go out and fight or they're coming for you? Well, well, every government, every government, not just the United States government, they want to disarm their citizens because they're afraid of their citizens more than they're afraid of Hitler or Putin. Or Because when these guys come in, they're definitely going to disarm you yeah. because they know, because that's how they took the power with arms. So when they say that there was a coup d'etat on the 6th of January of last year, really, without weapons? How mm -hmm. does that happen without weapons? You tell me. The only weapons that uh, somebody got arrested with was Antifa and Black Lives Matter. There were no weapons that the uh, Trump supporters had, except some provocateurs. So you can't take over. You can't create coup d'etat. So these thugs that took over the power of using weapons, they know that's why the first thing they're going to do is take your weapons away. And uh, and right now, because we played with it and kept thinking, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, we, we can deal with it now, we're at the nuclear um, brink. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do now? Now... You want to take our weapons away? Take them away because it's not going to help. 
Do you see a peaceful at this path point, that Putin comes out of this and saves I don't, face? No, because I see him I going all the way. I don't think. I don't think so. I think again, he's a psych, paranoid psychopath. He's not going to accept the defeat which he's losing right now with even the the overwhelming firepower, mm -hmm. overwhelming strength compared to Ukrainians. But again, Ukrainians fight for their homes. Uh, he's not going to. Uh, he's not going to be belittled. He's not going to be humiliated by a country that he doesn't even recognize that exists mm. he thinks that this is uh, he thinks that they're they're part of the russian world oh yeah he's not going to accept that i fortunately and I, it's not my place to say and i think i may be even sued for it or maybe i'm going to be investigated for what i'm about to suggest because he's a world leader yeah. but if we don't get rid of him soon literally eliminate him my fear is he's going to be backed against a wall uh he's Gary, already and and, he's and, already. and he's trying to save face and legacy and he's going to do something drastic to make his point and he knows that this administration is going to acquiesce and and and, and give him right. the room and he ex right he yeah. expects that he expects that uh zelensky president of ukraine is going to resign they're going to arrest him hang him or whatever or jail him like saakashvili and he, he's going to put a puppet regime here and uh, everybody's going to submit to it and the west is going to continue you know we need the money we need you know right. have you ever been in the fraternity you know have you ever been in the fraternity yeah, you know, well, yeah. the fraternities you know, we shouldn't accept this guy he's an idiot mm -hmm. You know, he's a, he's a freak. Yeah, but we need the dues. You know, we need the dues. So let's take him in. I mean, he was an idiot as a, you know, uh, as much as he rapes you and steals from you and you say, yeah, but he promised me to, he, that he will marry me. So, you know, I mean, it's idiotic. I don't understand that. I don't understand the, uh, we, we almost have that uh, spouse abuse syndrome. He's abusing us and we keep protecting exactly. him. Exactly. Do you see the so, does the will to fight I, surprise you from the Ukrainians? Uh, does the will to fight from the Ukrainians surprise you? No, you know, no, not at all. No. Uh, you know, I I was wrong because when I was uh, I was on on the Ukrainian TV and Ukrainian shows every day, several times a right. day, and I was saying nothing shows. You know, we General Petraeus, General Mattis, a lot of military guys. He doesn't have enough force. He doesn't. Have, it's a bluff, and Biden is bluffing too. They just want to say that Biden needs, you know, in November elections, he wants to come across that he saved the world from World War III uh, and, and get Nobel Prize for Peace. And Putin is going to say, okay, well, Ukraine will never be in the NATO and I want to, and that's how they're going to end it up. That was my prediction and prediction of many people. And then the way I saw Biden was acting, I said, okay, it's not serious. He keeps calling the dates of attack, but nothing showing that they will attack. I, I mean, I miscalculated. I, I grant it. Uh, I think a lot of me, we didn't think that Bo uh, Belarusians would get involved. We didn't think that he was going to use long-range air force mm -hmm. and bring forces from the rear. I mean, there was a lot of miscalculations in it. But one thing I didn't miscalculate, one thing I did, I did predict, I said that he's not expecting one thing, that the Ukrainians are going to fight like hell. They're going to dig in. They showed it in 2014 at mm. Donetsk airport. Uh, that they were not going to move. They're going to fight like hell, and they're prepared. Mm. They're ready for it. And um, Ukrainians are not serfs. They were never serfs. They were Cossacks. They were free-spirited people. Uh, they were never in a ghetto. So uh, they don't have that in there. I mean, they may look like Russians. They may sound like Russians, but they're not Russians. They're very rebellious, and, they, and they're tough fighters. So I knew that they were going to put up a huge resistance. I said, if there is 1% that Putin will attack, he is going to be surprised of the resistance that Ukraine's. They will, they will, uh, they will um, smack and make his nose bleed. Right. And we do have sometimes uh, those bullies. Until you make their nose bleed, they will continue to push and, and, and harass you in class. That bully will continue to take your lunch away from you. That he'll continue to grab girls until some kid will come up and smack him back. And now, blood, bloody his nose. We we don't have that kid in our class. We now, don't have that kid in our class that that would do that. I know it doesn't surprise you that China was starting to flex its muscle towards Taiwan, no, and we course. were starting to right. see that. It, it, do you see that playing out, or that you think they're going to wait and see how, what happens here? I exactly. My prediction was that if 
canary in the chance. coal mine type scenario. There's a, there is a chance that he would have a frontal uh, attack, you know, full scale attack on Ukraine. Then, you know, it would be along with China's attack on Taiwan. But I think Chinese are even more trickier. They're going to see the reaction. They're going to see another Afghanistan. They're going to see, uh, you know, the, the weak leadership. They're going to see that we're going to give in to nuclear uh, blackmail by this uh, by this degenerate. Um, uh, then they're going to say, okay, what's stopping us? Taiwan is ours. You know, let's go and get it. And they're already testing the ground there, right? They're already starting moving 100%. around. There. I, mean, I mean, they have Paralympics going on now, so maybe they're, you know, they're not so anxious about it. But you notice that the attack happened right after the Olympics were over. So, I mean, they, they did have an agreement with China. That's why the prediction of the dates was constantly being put off until the Olympics were over. Now, given you know, that we're in the in the midst of a primary cycle and we have some time before we know, you know, the house is going to change over and this and that. You're going to see everybody kind of stay steadfast in U.S. politics on this uh, and kind of, you know, take take a, an interesting, interesting positions with midterms coming. Do you see Biden uh, jumping in and giving any aid to try to salvage this situation? But I see him going down in a dumpster fire in this. I, I just don't know how he repairs this, Gary. I mean, what path would you take if you were advising him? What would you suggest? Resign. Yeah. That's, That's what I would advise him. Resign right now. I mean, you're not a capable. And uh, uh, we're gonna, what are we going to have? Kamala Harris as a president? I mean, I'm not sure it's better. but Might be worse. Yeah. Uh, that might be worse. So, uh, but at least it would buy time to deal with Putin, and maybe he'll die by, by that time. But I don't think it's going to stop him. At this point, somebody in our uh, government, somebody in a, in a White House, needs to make some unpopular decisions, has to make some. Mm -hmm. We're playing, I mean, we're in danger zone. We're in danger zone. We're dealing with unstable psychopath. Give me a prediction. How does it play out? Who's a threatening? Huh? Give me a prediction. How does it play out? Because I think he's going to steamroll right through, and this is going to be a total genocide. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be genocide. And if we try to stop him, he's going to do something in Chernobyl or 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 deploy a nuclear weapon. So unless we we can um, uh, we can dilapidate or sabotage mm -hmm. his nuclear weapon system somehow. I don't know. Uh, I'm not preview of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's risky. Uh, hopefully, some of his oligarchs uh, will realize that they've lost everything and Russia is in uh, deep shit for a long time and mm -hmm. try to get rid of him themselves. Maybe there will be some military leader, which I doubt, uh, who will uh, get rid of him somehow. But the thing is, I don't see any option. Who's the strongest? Unless we, get, who's get the, rid, unless we get rid of him quickly. Who's the strongest leader that that can step up and get involved in this and stand up to him that you think would be a huge help to draw the necessary support? That's not the United States. Well, it's only uh, Boris Johnson at this point. Do you think he would? So there's, there's just no one else. I don't know, but I, I mean, he's the only one that's at least Capable. looks like he's trying to do something. You know, and, uh, yeah. And what do but, the Ukrainians uh, need but right we don't, now? You know, but when Biden says we have unity in the NATO and we have unity with the Europe, I mean, yeah, come on. We don't have unity. And what do they need uh, right I, now on the even, ground? Even, even at the threat of a nuclear, uh, 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 of a nuclear disaster, we still don't have unity. I was going to ask, Gary, what do they need right now on the ground in Ukraine to help them immediately? Is it just more guns and ammo, more resources, the, or do they right. need actual boots on the ground? Well, the, I mean, boots on the ground would help, definitely. I think that the Ukraine should get into coalition with other nations that are willing to send troops. It doesn't have to be NATO. It doesn't have to be, maybe it's Poland, maybe it's other countries, uh, uh, Baltic states. I mean, they're all, you know, because they're going to be next. If he gets away with this, like he got away with everything else, he's not going to stop. I he's think Hitler. He's not going to stop. He's going to go... I, so the both. So and what are we going to say? And then Putin is going to say, "I'm deploying my nuclear, you know, my nuclear uh, arsenal." I think, and if, we're going to say, "Oh, okay. I don't think we should have a nuclear war over Estonia." Do you know where Estonia is, or Lithuania, or Latvia? Do you know how many people live there? Yeah, we we don't even we can't even find them on the map. 
Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do? Go in a nuclear war over these little bitty countries just because there's a piece of paper and a paragraph five on the NATO? I think if I, mean, the, I look, think if Biden truly wanted to give him a moment of pause, Gary, he would get a coalition with Boris Johnson, and with, he would need Germany. Germany would be the logical other partner, and he would say, "We're gonna we're gonna put peacekeeping advisors immediately in Kiev and protect Kiev, and we're gonna work this out diplomatically." If he did that immediately, that might be a way to salvage the situation. Just my I don't opinion. Think Putin is gonna go for it. Yeah. I don't know, I but think I think he, that would be. I don't, a, I don't think he's going. I don't think he's going. I don't think it's going to be humiliating. Yes, he is there to win and submit the Ukrainian people and submit the West. You took off. You took your embassies out of here. You took everything. You left it out and open for me. And now you want to. You want somebody? No, he's not going to do that. That's humiliating for him. One hundred percent. There's only one, John. There's only one option, in my opinion. I I, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. But uh, he, I but agree to me, with that's my mother. The only my remote, mother, my that, mother never had a wrong. <laughs> he never diagnosed anyone wrong. That's that's I mean, the she only. Went, she was she was said I was crazy a couple of times, but uh, he. Um, he, they, he he needs to go. To me, that's he the only remote go. possibility to salvage the situation for that administration. If I was to draw a path, I would say you need to get a coalition immediately of peacekeeping advisors in there yesterday. See, John, is as tough of a guy as you are, and I respect you. Is a respect you for your toughness and stuff, but you're still an American. You still see good yeah. sides, and you still see that. You know, as all Americans do. Well, no, he can't be that crazy. Oh, come on, let's let's talk. I believe he no, can. Come be. on, he's mm-hmm. can't. There are but at least that, that gives cannot, you the. There are not, there are, there are, there are people that should never leave the prison. There, there's nothing you can do. You can send them to the shrinks. You can send them to psychology. You can you can you can talk to them. You can give them f- free shit. You let them out of prison. They're going to commit a crime. I have they're going to kill somebody. They're going to rape somebody. I have to ask There's you. Some yeah. people, yeah. Once he takes Ukraine, if he does, uh, and let's say it takes six months, let's t- say it takes a year. Where does it stop? It doesn't stop. Ukrainians are going to. Uh, you see, the thing is, he can take the center of the city, maybe of 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 Kiev. Uh, Kiev, but the city is closer to Poland, the western Ukraine, like Lviv. I don't think he. I don't think he can occupy them for too long. You know, at night the Ukrainians. Okay, hello. Yep. At night, Ukrainians, are, they're going to come out and get them. There's going to be mm. tough guerrilla warfare. They're they're known for it. You know, all the partisans that that uh, harassed the German troops and the Soviet troops, for that matter. Where if in Ukraine, their grandparents are all the par- partisans. They're all insurgents. You know, you can call them whatever you want, freedom fighters, whatever. But you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. These guys are going to come out. They're going to harass Russian soldiers. They're going to kill them. They're going to they they're going to humiliate them nonstop. He's not going to put up with any of this as well. Yeah, he's going to increase. He's going to increase the firepower. He's going to burn buildings down. He's already firing. Uh, 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 missiles into the civilian uh, uh, populated areas. Now, the, the news has been reluctant to publish death toll numbers or to publish any figures out there. Why do you think that is? Because it doesn't fit their narrative towards Biden? Well, I, I don't know. I don't. Well, I don't know. It could be that they don't know. They don't know. Because it's, cha- it's a chaotic here. Yeah. Russians, the Russians are saying there are no casualties. We see the videos. <laughs> they say there, no, there are no casualties. There, there are no prisoners. Everything is going fine. Uh, Ukrainians, are, of course, are saying that thousands and thousands of Russian soldiers are dead. Uh, again, uh, it's, uh, it's got to be taken with a grain of salt. Do you think the Russian soldiers no. have the will to fight to continue this no. battle? No. I mean, uh, I stop a Russian soldier and ask him, what are you fighting for? Who are you fighting for? Whom are you fighting? Why are you here? They have no answer. They have no idea. Most of them, they say, we didn't know we were going into Ukraine. You know, we we did not know. We, we realized we were in Ukraine when we already ended up. They stop on the middle of the roads and they're asking the, the, the civilians which way, you know, the, the, what they did here, they changed the signs. 
of the streets and the directions. Yep, so, of course. so the Russians turned the, uh, their GPS systems off, so you can't locate them. I, I, I don't understand their logic, man, because there's a column of 50 tanks moving, and you don't think the GPS is going to dispatch you because mm -hmm. you're using your iPhone and the GPS is using it. No, I mean, they can see that there's a column of tanks moving down the major road. Mm -hmm. So they stop and they say, which way to Kiev? Which way to, to Kharkov? You know, they, they get lost. Some of them get lost. And there's plenty of videos where the cars stop and they're talking to Russian soldiers and say, what happened? Did you get lost? And they go, where the hell are we? You know, they're, they're confused because the signs are reversed. And... Uh, some of the signs are kind of like uh, saying, if you, you know, go fuck yourself this way, go fuck yourself this way, and go fuck yourself that way. Uh, they already did this. I mean, Ukrainians have a great sense of humor, I wanted to, too, but uh, I wanted even to ask in you, such dire situation. I want to ask you as well, what are you hearing out of Poland, and where do they stand on this? I think Poles are uh, uh, good allies of Ukraine. Uh, I think they're supplying them uh, with everything they have. Uh, they're taking refugees in. They're taking with them. I mean, they have set up refugee camps for women, for children. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got an SMS on my phone. If I want to be a refugee, you know, I guess they're sending it on my Ukrainian phone. I guess they're sending it to all the Ukrainians saying, if you need refuge, you know, if you cross the border, call us on this number and we will provide refuge for you. Uh, again, it's only women and children. Uh, men from uh, age 18 to 60, uh, you know, staying back in Ukraine. But the situation is dire. Situation is dire. They need weapons. They need weapons. They need night vision glasses. They need thermal vision. Um, the outpouring of support uh, through the celebrity avenues has been very interesting to watch. You saw uh, Vitaly Klitschko. Uh, you know, right. you've seen some of the, the the more notable Ukrainians step forward and start to make their presence known. Some of these calls to help might result in some private support. Has that ever been? Has that been accounted for? And we've almost never seen that in some degrees of war, at no, least publicly. They have. They at have. At least publicly. Have, uh, the, I have. I actually have uh, uh, Americans uh, calling me, writing to me, saying, "How can I? How can I? Uh, I have military experience. How can I help Ukrainians?" I tell them, "I don't know. Come to the border and tell the border guards you can help them." I don't know. I don't know how to do that. There. Uh, there. I've been contacted again by. Uh, through the uh, uh, social network to uh, by the Russians saying I have a Russian passport I have a lot of military experience but I want to fight for the Ukrainian independence how do I do it who do I contact I say you know I tell them again come to the border and so you know take all the documents you have and surrender yourself to the border guards and tell them that's what you want to do i also think that the ukrainians should offer monetary rewards mm -hmm. like if the russian soldiers come across with the with the armored personnel vehicle or with a tank the crew comes with a tank you know ten thousand dollars each i'm just making this up no no it's a great idea uh, ukrainian citizenship and you remain in the same rank and position as you held in a russian army come on over you speak the language you understand everything doesn't take I love that like idea, Gary. West, It's like Eastern and Western uh, Germany or like uh, North and, so and uh, South Korea. You know, but I can't imagine. To me, this is like North Korea is trying to attach South Korea to itself. You know, they actually think that this is going to work, that the South Koreans are going to do it now because they're, they're going to come in. Poland, the only uh, thing is, again, huh? I was going to say, Poland obviously has fear that this will continue, you know, towards them. Uh, do you think that's the path? I mean, that's the obvious path. Do you think that's the direction Putin would go if this continues? I, I mean, again, I don't know. I can't predict this lunatic. Yeah. But if we don't stop him, if somebody does something, if you don't, if you don't bloody his nose, that that bully in your class, he will continue to take your lunch away. He will continue to harass more people. He's. He, I think that he probably would be Baltic states, because they were for because they were part of the Soviet Union. And he has a claim. Uh, less than any other. At least he has an implied uh, claim. And even though they're part of NATO, again, let's ask NATO if he invades them. Well, we're going to start a nuclear war, and he's going to say, "I'm deploying," like he's doing now. I'm deploying a nuclear weapon. Are we going to blink or not? It's a NATO country. Estonia has, I think, less than a million people. It's a, it's a small country. Are we going to start a war over it? Smaller most than Americans, Montana. Most, most Americans, most uh, Europeans can't even point it out on the, on the map. Mm. Mm. I'm sure his appetite is going to grow. His appetite, you know, your appetite grows as you eat. 
Somebody yeah. got to cut his appetite off. But I think it's too late. I think, I think it's too late to negotiate with this guy or to come to any kind of agreement. And, and until he Biden, has to and, go, and until Biden's going to get to a place where he's going to he's going to open up the Keystone pipe, pipeline and start to to loosen up some of the resources here, which now would be a no better time than any, right, Gary, to begin to explore some domestic oh, pushback. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. But Biden's not going to do that. No. This is this is a tremendously scary situation, and I saw your piece on Fox News this morning. You did a fabulous job, by the way. If anyone here Thank hasn't you. caught more of Gary, go check out the Fox News segment that he did this morning. That's probably available on YouTube or on Fox by now. Uh, the clip, and and we'll put that down below. But uh, uh, you're doing a tremendous job getting the word out there at, at your own detriment. Thank you. I'm Thank sure. You. Thank you, John. Thank you. I, yeah. It means a lot for me. Come from you. I think you know. I think you're. Uh, you're a flag of an American people. I always wanted to be an American like you. You know what I'm saying? This is what America... You are. You, you, to me, you know, to be a poor Jewish immigrant kid uh, to come to this country didn't open up a delicatessen. To me, this is what American looks like. This is what Americans are supposed to be. This is what Americans are supposed to be. We're supposed to defend our rights. We're supposed to fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. And Ukrainians are fighting not just for themselves. They're fighting for all of us right now. They're bleeding for all of us. Old men, women, kids, they're all fighting right now. And, see, and everybody abandoned them. Abandoned them. Yeah. We abandoned them. We, I, we, we led to it. You know, let's get rid of Trump at any cost. So now Ukrainians are saying, here is the cost. But, yep. you know, it's not only the cost that the Ukrainians pay. We all are. If that idiot deploys a nuclear weapon, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I see. I, I tr do my best, Gary, to try to put out a, a, a product that's that's true and, and get the voices like yourselves that are out there and actually on the ground. I want people that are making the news, not not reporting the news on this show. And I want to have people that are out there getting it done. And I and I see a guy like you out there, you know, putting your flag in the ground and trying to help, trying to get involved. I, I would love to see a, a private movement. I think your idea to offer conscripts, which has been going on for a thousand years, uh, conscription and, and going after the Russian soldiers and saying, hey, 10,000 a tank, you know, and somebody should fund that. I think you'd see major moves, oh. and I, I think that would be amazing. I think that's a great suggestion. I'll fund it. I'll do it. I, I mean, and also I think that, uh, you know, Stalin had that uh, a reputation that he says, no, if you, uh, if you destroy the German tank, you get so many rubles. If you destroy the, uh, an airplane, you destroy some. Some of the Russian aces were, uh, by the Russian standards, billionaires, you know, because they shut down 10 or 12 German airplanes. They were getting paid for it. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I know that we fight because we're patriotic and we fight for the righteousness. But you know what? All of our military guys, we all got paid. Mm -hmm. You know, we all, uh, and we got uh, paid well. Nothing wrong with fighting uh, for the sense. money either. Right. So patriotism uh, should be also compensated. Uh, appropriately now a lot so, of i want to ask you before i let you go because i know time sensitive it's with like you. it's like i'm sorry it's like the professors yeah. in our college none of those professors teach for free let me tell you they get paid very very well even though they have ids of everything free but then themselves do not teach free oh 100 percent. now it, it, the fear looming obviously in the distance is china and a lot of people are, are nervous about them is there a straw that breaks their back that that forces them into this and and enforces a scene coalition between them and russia that we haven't seen yet i mean we've seen flickers of it but is there is there a move that they could make that caused that could spiral this into dare i say it a world war scenario you know what i i uh 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 I think that I know something about the subject when it comes to Russia and former Soviet Union. Of course. Chinese are always a mystery to me. They always sit back and they always watch and they always observe and then they come in and take whatever they want because these two have been fighting and or uh, buy it. weak. Or buy it. Or buy it. You know, or buy it at the cheapest discount price yeah, and they buy it and all this. So, and... Uh, 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 I, I want to ask you a question. If Shoot. you guess it right, do you know? Do you know? Do you know what uh, Ukrainians' favorite gun, American gun? AR-15. No, I mean handgun. Oh, uh, it's got to be a Sig. It's a Sig, dude. It's got to be a Sig. Sig. I was, and I was when I was, you know, the when I was having, you know, the gun show mm -hmm. in the Las Vegas when I met you. 
uh, I was showing them pictures and they say, point out the SIG, point out the SIG. Is that the SIG? Is that the SIG that you're passing? I said, and I'm like, and I remember Jude and I said, wait a minute, didn't John was having SIGs out there? So I showed yep. them pictures. Yep, SIGs Hour yeah. is a flagship sponsor of the show and we're happy yeah, to see yeah, Ukrainians yeah. using them. And I, I'm sure when Ukrainians get their freedom and they will, they're going to be your best customers. I hope so. I hope so. It's a pleasure to have you, Gary. And I know time is sensitive with you, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to choose thank my you, show to you. come on and to and to, and to preach. You. So uh, I hope you're able to help a lot of folks down there, whether it's an advisory capacity or even some of these initiatives or some of these programs that you're starting. I hope to see you start one or, or, or really get one off the ground, especially. I think some of those ideas are brilliant, and I think uh, people need to start to listen. I think the way wars are going to be fought is drastically going to change. I think we're seeing it now, and I think uh, we're seeing people basically uh, especially russian soldiers say why are we doing what's going on and we're seeing a lot of weird movements so it's going to be very interesting how it plays out on a global scale uh any last thoughts or anything you want to add well i uh, but i still want people to realize that uh eventually they will be overrun by by the right it's just yes. the sheer numbers mm -hmm. just sheer numbers uh, no matter what the morale of the Russian forces, it's, it's, the Ukrainians will be able to withstand for only so long. However, I hope that at one day, I really hope, I pray that one day at our military academies, we're going to be studying about two different six-day wars. Yep. And one is going to Israel, the other one is Ukrainian. That the Ukrainians are going to smash them within another in the next six days, in the next five days. And uh, Ukrainians have this great slogan. They say, Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. Uh, glory to the heroes of Ukraine. They're true heroes. They're, uh, the whole world is watching them now. And uh, I don't think they will let us down the way we let them down. I think Putin's far past giving a shit. And I think this scenario is far past a winning one for any side. Right. No, there are no winning sides in the war, but still, I, uh, Putin uh, is not somebody that uh, we can take uh, lightly or not seriously at this point. The, the, that KGB thug is dangerous. 100%. I don't think he. I don't think we can negotiate with that crocodile. 100%. Now, I know you're time sensitive, Gary, and I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, retired Thanks, Captain Gary Tabak uh, on this show. It's an honor to have you, and I know you can either confirm nor deny your location, but I'm looking forward to, oh, to hearing just from you. Just one correction. Updates. I just want you to make sure that I'm a Navy, U.S. Navy captain. I'm not an Army captain. I'm a real captain. I love that. Every Navy guy just stood up and clapped. I know it. I love that. Uh, I appreciate you, and I appreciate your time, and thank you so much. I mean, truly, I mean it. Hopefully, if, if you make it back out this way, uh, we can get you back on for a report or, or down the line as you get more information. I will. Thank, thank you, you, sir. John. We're out. Say God bless. God, God bless. bless.